So today, I'd like to introduce you to Joe Semprini and our new podcast called The Artist's Heart. And the reason that it's called The Artist's Heart, you'll understand once you get to meet Joe, because everything he does comes straight from the heart. Today, Joe's going to give us some input on his sculpture. Joe, you've got three really cool pieces there. I need to know more about them. Okay, um, welcome everyone. Uh, today we have three different type uh, sculptures. The first one, which is right over my shoulder, is stainless steel. It's brushed stainless steel, so you weld up your pieces. I don't know if you could see it, it has, you know, a different kind of design, which actually could be blown up to be in front of a big building. So it's basically, you know, a sculpture, but it's a modello for, could be 20 feet high in stainless steel. Um, and this is black Belgian marble, which is pretty expensive. It's imported. So it's got very little cracks and whatever in it. Uh, I mean, uh, veins, little ones, but it's very, uh, very handsome. Um, the one in the middle, now this is pretty heavy. The stainless steel is very heavy. It's not hollow. So these are solid stainless steel squares, bars, rectangle-ish type um, pieces of metal. So you weld them all up and then you do like a brush uh, effect. So it sparkles as you move around it. And uh, yeah, it's very handsome. Uh, the one in the middle was actually one of the first little sculptures I did. And it, it actually should be a little more shiny. I didn't polish it up, but it's solid um, uh, bronze and it's on a, uh, what a, I forget, it's a glazed marble, like a honey, honey cut marble. I don't know if you could see it has some veins going through it and uh, it's got a rustic type effect. The outside is like stone, but the in the middle section is like a honey cut marble and it's bronze. So you have to keep these uh, polished all the time. You could do a coating on them, but I've done that with some pieces, but I like to keep it as natural as possible. That one is, is very natural with that type of base because uh, it's very rustic. It's just cut right out of the, the marble stone. So you get a slab. But so that's kind of a, you know, a smaller one. And actually, Joan Collins, who used to be on Dynasty, has the same star only chromed on a black marble base, which I did for her. She was my next door neighbor for a few years. Very nice lady. Um, the third is chrome steel on black Belgian marble. So it's the same marble as the first one. Has a beveled base on the marble. And it's a, called Trinity. So if you're in a religious mode, it's like Father, Son, Holy Ghost, whatever. Uh, but a modern version of a cross, if you will. And uh, that's, you know, cut out of steel and it's buffed and chromed and rebuffed. And, uh, so it's a, it's a pretty handsome and you get a nice, it's almost like a mirror for sure. Um, so that's three different types of pieces that I did and experimented with um, in the day. And then in, we have a painting in the background too, uh, which I don't know if you want to get into that one as well. First, let me ask you, how long does it take to make these types of uh, sculptures? Is this a, I need to know, is this a month? Is this a year? Is, what does it take to do this? Well, it depends on if you're working full time, which at that time I was working full time on these. And it's a process. You take, they're different, you know, you first have to find the pieces that you're working with. And the stainless steel, you know, uh, you have to purchase it, whatever, and get an idea 
what you want to do, kind of do a little drawing first, and a concept anyway, and then you cut the pieces to, you know, to size that you want. And then you have to have special stainless steel rods to weld it uh, because it's stainless steel. So it's a different process, but it's all welded sculpture. And then you have to go get your base and measure your base. And those were in California. These were made in Connecticut. And then I shipped them to California and had the bases made. So it, it's a lengthy process. So you can't really say, you know, you know, three hours or a week, because it might take you, you know, a week to cut them the way you want you know, then another day to weld them together. And then the brush steel takes, you know, it takes a lot of time. Um, and, you know, to get the marble set correctly. So it looks, you know, correct. These, you know, this, the second, so to tell you the answer to the question, it, it's really hard to calculate how much time you put into these things. I mean, unless you time yourself you know, uh, how long it takes you to do each thing. Because um, then you have to send like this one out to be chrome and you, know, you have to deliver it. It's there for several days till they're finished. Um, then it has to be buffed, whatever. Then that has to be measured and put on the base. And they cut the base according to the size of the piece. Um, so it's very lengthy process, you know, uh, it takes a lot of time. So it's uh, not something you just do overnight. Yeah. It's, it has to be scheduled and everything you run into wrinkles, you know, when you chroming them, they want several pieces. They don't want to do just one piece. So you have to complete a series and then have them all done, then do all the bases. Um, and so it, it, it's hard to calculate exactly a week, 10 days, a month. It might take you a whole month to get it all done, um, but you might spend a week doing one, one thing or the other. Can you uh, bring, like, I know they're heavy, but like the first one, can you bring it close, do a close up to the camera so we can see? Uh, and is there any, yeah. It's about 50 pounds. Yeah, look at that, that's great. You know, it has, it's uh, all, and I have a few of these, all different. Now, is there a story that goes along with that particular sculpture? No, I'm, well, no, I just, there was a girl I knew that used to work for a company in Connecticut. She actually gave me these pieces of steel because, um, you know, she bought, she was very generous, but I had a stock offering in Connecticut, a Reg D504 to raise a half million dollars, which I completed 70,000 of it. And she bought stock, she bought a painting, and she gave me some of these metal pieces that were at the factory. So uh, that was a generous type of thing to do. So um, I made several pieces like this, sold a few, I have a few left. Um, so, how, about the, how about the middle priest? Bring that forward. That one, I wish it was polished, you know, and it's brass. I don't know if you could see. Yep. Uh, or bronze. And that one is, you know, you, this one was done out of a sheet. So it's, it's a similar process. Uh, you don't know if you can see the base there. It's like a honey. Honey, there's a word for the marble. I forget what it is, but a uh, special type of marble. Um, and it's very, you know, you could polish that like the other ones, but I like the rustic effect of, them, of, of the stone on the outside. But anyway, that's that's cut out of um, bronze or brass. I'm sorry, that's brass. And then it should be polished. It's very, very bright when it's, you know, polished, you could see part of the shine, but it's a little dull. Um, but that one is cut out of the uh, metal and then polished. So that's a different, little different procedure. Uh, but you have to keep those 
polished all the time. You could coat them with acrylic or whatever, which I've done, but sometimes it gets bubbles in the, you know, the coating and it doesn't look as good. So, you know, you try different things, but that one I just left natural because I like it that way. I do too. Um, I do. Can you pick up that last one? That one I do. No, it's not, it's, it's heavy, but it's very delicate on this base where if you tip it the wrong way, it will fall. Got it's, it. You just kind of have to leave it be and it's fine. But even when you carry it, you have to be very careful how you handle it because it only has one connection going through the base to solidify it. Um, so you don't want to disturb it. Some of the other ones are when you cut these things, you know, you get a base and you say, okay, that'll work, but then they cut the base and it's expensive. So you don't want to say, okay, yeah, make that a little bigger. It's a little too late. So you already paid for that marble. You, you know, they're not going to say, okay, we'll do that for somebody else. It's like yours. So once you pick out that size, which you can't tell until you put the base together with the piece, how it's going to balance. So it's it's pretty delicate, you know, and you want you don't want them too big so they look sloppy, you know, and have more base than sculpture. So, you know, you want to keep it as trim and you know it goes with the piece. But it, it it's okay, but you don't want to mess with it. It's pretty delicate. You know, it will fall over if you tip it a little too much. So we'll just leave that one there. I. But, you know, Joe, I really like the way, though, that creates this sort of sense of um, one of the things I really like about your sculpture and a lot of sculpture in general is the way it seems to defy the physics of space and all that kind right. of stuff. You have this heavy piece of metal that looks like it's an animated arm spread, you know, of uh, anthropomorphized type of uh, abstract shape and anyway I just I, I see that you know you actually said that that was sort of a uh, abstract crucifix and uh, or cross or, or some kind no, of religious I, I call it I call it the Trinity so it's you know a depiction of of that and not so much a cross because it doesn't really look like a cross it's more of a trinity which you know represents that um idea and uh i did two or three of these and they're that's the only one left they were sold um so they're you know people pretty much like that idea uh, one was much taller and the other one was very thin, but well, that's the last one that uh, is left. I had about 70 of these chrome pieces and I got maybe eight or nine, maybe 10 left. Um, they were pretty popular. Uh, one is a Carl Jr. corporate headquarters. It kind of looked like the state of California. Um, and so he liked it and bought it. So. You try different ideas, different shapes, different, you know, but you have to find the pieces that go along with it and either cut them or whatever. So it's a process, you know, um, it's a lot of work. The sculpture is much more work than labor intensive. Paintings, um, <laughs> I did a painting the other day and I guess I'm getting used to those digital paintings. You can erase stuff and colors and shapes and put other things in. I put some paint on it. I started it, it was coming good. And then I made one and I go, oh, that does not look good at all. And it's down, it's wet. And I tried to clean it up, made another mess. So you have to be pretty exact when you're painting. There's pretty much no forgiveness, unless it's just crazy and you don't care what really what the outcome is going to look like and you're getting just wild which so, i like to joe tell me how you know when you're doing these sculptures how do you know when you're done well you have an idea in your head you know um there's one right here next but i don't want to move the camera and stuff that's a broken circle 
And that was the idea, a broken circle. Um, but finding the peace and the tolerance and the shape and or cutting it, it, it it's, it's a lot of work, you know. Um, but when you're finished, you're either happy with it and or not. It, it, you, you try and come as perfect to the idea in your head as you can or the feeling and you know sometimes you say hey that's perfect and you know i didn't have to do anything else it's done i mean on some of these metals that are cut out you know when they're cut out and then you have to buffer them whatever that the shape is done and then it's just chroming them and buffering them and then go into the marble effect and choosing the size and stuff like that but you, you kind of know when you know the shape is finished you know it doesn't need any more if you're welding it if it's an outdoor sculpture or a bigger piece you know it could change from the concept to what's finished uh easily because you see oh wow that, this fits better in this space than what you had planned or a color that you you, you once it's done if you're going to paint it and i like painting the sculptures kind of Moreauish, where they're either balancing pieces and you have a, a sun and a moon and a star or whatever. And those are, you have to paint in those colors. But some of the outdoor pieces, you might say, oh, wow, you start somewhere and then all of a sudden it's a little bigger or wider. Um, and or those you don't do too much on. You kind of know where to stop. Painting, sometimes I get carried away. You know, Speaking of paintings, what about the painting that's behind those three sculptures? Okay, painting is the bottom part that you're seeing there is boats that are floating in the water, you know, different colors. I don't know if you've ever been to Jamaica. They have all these boats that are red, turquoise, yellow, blue, pink, all these different colors, and they go fishing, um, and they pull them up on the sand, and they kind of at sunset, just float in the water, but you get, you know, a, a, a myriad of colors, shapes bouncing around. And then up on top of the painting, there is a sun, you know, the sun, which is by itself and it's setting in that context. So that's kind of it's sunset in Jamaica, but the bottom part are boats floating in the water, you know, and you're getting uh, reflections of those boats in the water. Perfect. Now, James, did you want to ask something about the sculptures? I did have a couple of questions. And one was, A, do you work on more than one piece at a time? In yeah. the past, have you done this? And B, yeah. talk a little bit about these archetypes that seem to run through, you know, your work, the Trinity, the moon and the stars, the, it's all very kind of cosmic and almost- Yeah, stars. I'm a very cosmic guy. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, on the, on the artworks, I had a 3,000 foot studio in Connecticut that I built with my dad. It had a lot of light, big windows, and it was all concrete, cinder blocks and such. Perfect for welding and doing metal works. Um, and um, I, I, I would be doing several pieces at one time, okay? You'd have... Um, I do do more than one thing at a time because if you're doing an outdoor piece and you're painting it, you know, you have to wait for the paint to dry. So you go buff another sculpture or do, I always have a canvas laying around and you know, use the paint from the brushes uh, when I'm painting and paint the picture or, you know, whatever. But you, you have to be careful because there's dust flying all over the place and you don't want to ruin things. But yeah, you have waiting time you know, so I'll work on several things at one time. Um, you're, I was out there like 13, 14 hours a day uh, when I was doing it full time. And, you know, I had six or five months in the summer to get everything done. And then I'd ship them out west to different galleries. And then I'd get out of here for the winter. <clears throat> what I'd like to know is we're going to close. And what's on the artist's heart today? Oh, huh. 
what's on the artist's heart today? The artist's heart today, um, I had a friend call me yesterday that has prostate cancer. So my art goes out there to all people to heal them. Um, so that's pretty much the intention behind all of it is to get it out there so people see it, even if it's a, for a fraction of a second or it's in a medical center or what have you, it just heals them fractionally or a lot for that day or they may carry it forward because I'll put that thought out there too. And then just heals them. It makes them feel a little better about whatever situation they're in. And uh, I know it works because I've had people tell me that. So it's received because when I do it, I make sure the thought is that they will receive.